In the name of God the merciful, the beneficent, thanks be to God the Almighty. God's peace and prayers be upon Muhammad, the balm of our hearts and the healer of our bodies, the light by which we are made to see, and upon his family and companions. May God be pleased with them all. I greet you in the name of Islam. So peace and God's blessings be upon you. And allow me to welcome you to this new program, The Revolution of Man. This show is going to highlight those revolutions carried out by people such as you and me. Normal people who made a stand at a particular moment. And these people were remembered throughout history for that act. There are many people from the days of the Prophet, peace be upon him, until our own. Millions, nay, hundreds of millions of people have lived. But history has never immortalized people who went with the flow and walked on like sheep. In fact, history has always held up those people who have stood against the tide and proved their point. Take it as a rule. Great humans and scholars have a different form of logic to that of others. Great humans and scholars have a different form of logic that sets them apart from the rest of mankind and thus are remembered by history. Every one of us, if you think about it, is made up of two halves. The first half is spiritual, like to an angel. You wish to ascend, to be pure, chaste and clean. Have a connection with God above. But there is a second half which makes us up. For we are also made of mud, and this earthly side is like to all other creatures. We need food, we need drink, reproduction, sleep. We have desires, hatred, envy, and wrath. You're a creature of two natures, the half or state that is like unto angels, that seeks to ascend to their level, and the second half that pulls you down. You're conflicted by these two sides. Sometimes you emulate the angels. For example, when you pray. You're near to God above, beloved by God. You're never closer to God than when you pray. And so you pray and call on the Almighty, and you become like an angel. And your soul flies with the angels. Your soul is like an angel in its ascendancy and purity and chastity. But then there's another side. You need money. You need cash, marriage. You need food and sleep. This is the other part of your being that beckons you. Our problem is that our desiring half, this mud-faced half, sometimes prevails. You're overcome by envy and you envy others. You lust for power and so you expend your money to gain authority. You're overcome by lust for money and you move to make money unjustly, to grow your wealth and business, to build a second story or to refurbish your house. And so lust overtakes you and you take money that is haram or against God's will. You could want to gain wealth, and so you put your hand to receive a bribe, or what some call a gift, a graft. Sometimes you may slip and drink that which is forbidden. Remember, we are all constantly in conflict between this and that. But what guides us, what differentiates our noblest hopes from our basest desires, is religion. For you to follow religion, you must at some point rebel against the desire to revolt against this lust for power within you, to stand up against the love of money over your love for your child or for your love of your country so that you may stand by your faith. This is where our show, The Revolution of Man, comes in. We take examples of ordinary people with extraordinary attitudes. If they've maintained their love for money or lust for power or love for their children and love for their homes and remained in their homes... History would have forgotten them, but they rose up against all this and were led by their faith to God Almighty. They were remembered by history. We shall meet many examples who took a stand against a defect in their body or against the power that they wielded or stood up to the evil thoughts within themselves, against the wrath and hatred within themselves or against the petty feuds with other humans. And they revolted within themselves, and so history remembers them, and they became our role models. Our Islamic history is full of characters like this, whom we shall mention and take as an example. But I bear a message to every Muslim youth. 
Whenever you encounter one of the examples of who we talk about, compare yourself to them. If you see that there are similarities between yourself and them, don't close your ears. Don't stop listening. Don't close your eyes and say, this doesn't concern me. Because people are only people, and human needs are universal. But if you happen to encounter such an example that speaks to something within you, something even your parents may not know about, that your friends don't either, someone whose internal conflicts are like yours. If you encounter an example like this, and you find that you can relate to them, follow their lessons straight away. If you look at one of these revolutionaries, and revolution is not merely going out onto the streets, it's something that's within us, revolting against human conflicts, against desire and lust, against evil wishes, against base wants, against all evil. Look at them, and they will steady your feet on the path of righteousness. Resist part of that which your body calls you to do, of what demons call you to do, of those base desires. Resist these earthly things which may be coming from within you. Resist them and become righteous. Consider the prophet's saying about how an evil look can be as an arrow in the devil's quiver, and that anyone who avoids it will be blessed by the Almighty with a good feeling in his heart that others don't have. Sometimes just averting your eyes from a wicked thing is a revolution. You might say, is it possible that such a simple task can be a revolution? Yes, because you are revolting against something within you. Human nature wants to look upon what God has forbidden, be it body, be it picture, any sight that God has forbidden. Human nature leads you towards these base and earthly things, but you're standing in the way. Your just revolution makes you say, not I. I shall not look at what is forbidden. Your righteous attitude in that moment will cause God to put sweetness in your heart. Sometimes you'll stand up for the lust to money. You say, I have a wife and children and expenses to cover. So it's natural for you to put your hand to accept a bribe. You control some paperwork that you won't let through unless someone gives you money. You should rise up and say, I shall not be the one who takes money. That is haram. I shall not feed my children and wife with money unjustly taken. I shall not bring this money into my home. You revolt by refusing that money which is forbidden to you. Is this taking a stand? Of course, because you're standing against your base desires, against the lust of the devil, and against his evil whispers, against those bad influences who tell you that you should take the money like everyone else, saying, everyone takes these, they're not bribes. You're revolting against a society that may be on the path to doom, the path of haram, the road that leads to God's wrath. And yet you stand with your prophet, peace be upon him, who taught us that the flesh which has grown out of haram will not enter paradise. Hell has more right to it. You're rising up against money that is haram and championing fair gain, and God Almighty will reward you with legitimate gain, even a little bit. God Almighty will bless you with that little bit. Make it sweet to you. Make it a source of happiness, give you unity with your wife, allow you to sleep easy at night, because you rose up against that human weakness and refused to take that which is haram or not rightfully yours. We will look at exemplars who revolted against that dominion within men's souls, that dominion that makes one favor his brother or cousin against another who is more deserving. This person chose to be a champion of right and fair, because our beloved prophet, peace be upon him, taught us that anyone who is given a position by God to administer the affairs of Muslims, who picks someone for a task out of favoritism, though he knows that there are others more qualified for that task among the Muslims, then both God and his prophet shall wash their hands of him. Your priorities lie with the good of your nation, your people, and other Muslims. So you should not say that you would advance your brother or cousin or neighbor or member of your clan. You should choose someone who is more qualified, more capable, and better suited to serve the requirements of that task. When we revolt from within these false social norms, when the change comes from within us against nepotism and its ilk, saying, I will not stand for nepotism and favoritism, but shall champion qualification and capability, as per the words of the prophet, peace be upon him.
Do you understand the revolution of which we speak? It comes from within our will to resist these social ties. The social ties that we support ahead of the good of our country, of our people, of our children, and our kin, and all Muslims. We'll revolt in this program and trace the ascent of the people who are not few. No, you can be one of them and have people look at you and say, See him, he who doesn't favour his kin or clan, but chooses he who is of benefit to all Muslims. We'll continue after the break with our introduction to this program. The Revolution of Man. May God Almighty benefit us with one of these examples of righteousness. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Welcome back to our program, The Revolution of Man, where we discuss human examples, everyday people. They're not angels, nor are they prophets, just people who followed the path of religion, which stopped them from straying and being lost. Think, was Omar bin al-Khattab born a companion? Of course not. During the days of ignorance, he was cruel. During the days of ignorance, he was powerful. A harsh man. He was an oppressor. But Omar stood up to his own self and became a companion of the Prophet. Was Abu Bakr al-Sadiq born a companion? No. Khalid bin al-Walid? Abu Safyan? They were not born good men. But in a moment of clarity, when they realized the truth and were convinced of it, they followed the Prophet, peace be upon him, and made the choice and rebelled against their sinful past and even their kin. Omar stood up and said, He who wishes his mother to mourn his death or his children to be orphaned, let him follow me beyond this valley to stop me, for I leave and I take my faith to the Prophet. This is the revolution we want, the same as that of the Prophet, peace be upon him's companions. They stopped being a lowly people fighting one another to please their Persian and Byzantine masters. They stopped being a people who sought handouts from the Persians, from the Byzantines, barely feeding themselves on the scraps from the tables of the Persians and Romans on their meager handouts. They became the dominant civilization on the planet. You are the best of nations raised up for the benefit of men. But they did not become great people and leaders of nations and masters of nations through inaction. They didn't get there until they left behind their past full of alcohol and corruption. Not until our master and their master stood up and said that, Behold, everything pertaining to the days of ignorance is completely abolished. And the corruption of the pre-Islamic period is abolished. And the first of our corruption I abolish is that of Abbas ibn Abd al-Mutalib. The Prophet, peace be upon him, put the corruption of his own uncle, al-Abbas, under his foot when the nation, the Ummah, revolted against its bleak history, against its wicked history, and its dark present, and followed the light of guiding light of the revelation of the Prophet. They became the greatest of nations, each one of you. Each Muslim youth, every one of you watching me now, every boy and girl and man and woman, fathers and mothers, university professors and school teachers, factory workers, administrators, ministers, princes and ambassadors, every person regardless of their status or their role in society, we all need to revolt against ourselves first to change the evil that is within us. Every father needs a revolution within his home. Teach your kids right from wrong, halal from haram. Teach them about shameful things and that there are things on television that no Muslim household should look at, that no Muslim daughter should love these images. God, we ask you, guide them and us and all Muslims. Guide us all. We preachers must revolt against asking God for personal things. We must make sure our ears hear nothing but that which is good. Revolt against our tongues so they speak nothing but justice and truth. We must cast aside lies and idle gossip and slander forever. We need a generation of rebels. The whole of the Arab world is now experiencing cultural and social rebellion. But revolutions cannot change us unless we change from within. For God Almighty told us that God does not change a nation until they have changed what is within their hearts. 
So what if this person has been replaced by that person? Our disagreement was never with individuals. We were never in conflict with individuals and people. We were looking for a way to ensure justice and equality and love. To be champions for the weak and make them strong. To take the poor and make them rich. To take the rich out of their moral poverty and say to them, give to your brother who is in need. To take those with power and position and pull them out of the insolence of office, out of the pomp of their position, out of their contempt for the creations of God Almighty. To take their hand and make them relate to the weak and the poor masses. Our revolution is that of humanity. Our goal is not to replace people. On the contrary, we want to change behavior, to change our way of life. Life, my brothers, is not a game of chess where we move one piece and replace it with another. That is why the prophet, peace be upon him, did not remove kings from power. He did not dethrone sultans or exchange one tribal elder for another. He used to tell us, if you want security, accept Islam. If you accept Islam, Allah, the sublime, will reward you doubly. Once because you embraced Islam, and again because you have been just with your people, and they followed you. The Prophet, peace be upon him, never judged anyone for their personality. You remember the story of Osama bin Zaid, when the companions sat together with the Prophet, and he made each of them speak of his heroics and great deeds. When it was Osama's turn, he asked them what he had done. He said, I caught hold of a man and held my sword to strike. And he said, there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. And I killed him. The messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, he said there is no God but Allah, and then you killed him. I said, messenger of Allah, he made a profession out of the fear of the weapon. The prophet said, woe unto you. How dare you do that when he said there is no God but Allah? Woe unto you. How dare you do that when he said there is no God but Allah? He continued saying that to such an extent that I wished to rid myself of all my deeds and embrace Islam afresh on that day, to have all his sins forgiven. Our quarrel was never with individuals. Our quarrel is with alcohol, not with this person. We do not fight the corrupter because he is corrupt, but we fight corruption that is a plague upon his soul. We are not masters of people. We are their stewards, their carers. Ours is not to say that this person is a sinner, that this one is doing wrong, that this person is going to hell. That is not our remit. It's not up to the preachers to divide mankind, sending this man to heaven and this man to hell. We cannot save one person and condemn another. Our task is to rebel against those bad things that originate within us, these old and outdated habits. Our mission is to revolt against dealing unjustly with people, against selfishly taking that which was bequeathed by those who died from their families and beneficiaries. Our mission is to revolt against the withholding of inheritance from sisters or the stealing of that which belongs to widows and orphans. Our mission is to revolt against hypocrisy, lies, cheating. As businessmen and traders, we must revolt against inflating prices and overcharging people for the goods that we provide for them. Our mission is to revolt against a hospital that will not release the body of the deceased until the medical bills are paid, that treats people like numbers. Our mission is to revolt against the pharmacy that overcharges people for medicine, profiteering off the hunger of the poor and the illness of the destitute. Our mission is to revolt against the so-called morality that does not befit the people of Muhammad. Our mission is to rebel and go back to being what God Almighty intended us to be, the best of nations in love, fidelity, loyalty, protecting the weak, standing for the oppressed. You now understand what our program is about. The revolution of man is about that time when one must stand up to injustice and be on the side of right. At one point, every one of us must review the past and rebel against the injustice that abounds, standing for justice. That is our message on this show, the revolution of man. So join us, and may God make us among those who rebel against injustice and stand for truth.
We shall meet God Almighty willing on this program, and we ask God Almighty to count it in our favor, and God's peace and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad and on his kin. May God bless them, and may God bless you too. Peace be upon you. Amen.